and welcome on back to Baseless Claims, our casual conversational comedy podcast. My name is Tay. I am Tory Boat Boy Thompson. I am Tyler Big Money Man Matheson. Tyler, Taylor, I would like to hit you with a question from Meg. Oh, we're starting off with a recommendation. Oh, yeah, sorry. We're going to start off with a recommended topic here. Oh, wow. Ah, so we're really, we're really okay. front-loading this, almost as if we're trying to communicate with the audience to send us topics. Yeah, huh, what a, so, what a concept! Like, like just reading stuff that people send us. Like that seems pretty cool. It's never it's never been done before. No, we we are the we are the first one to go. So Meg asks, well, not even it's kind of just a statement. Friends with <laughs> benefits, thoughts, feelings, as much as you're comfortable sharing. Well, all all friends have benefits because they give you the joy of friendship and they mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they laughter. can yep. yeah, laughter, uh companionship, uh mm-hmm. bouncing ideas off of them. Uh you know, uh f- basically in the modern age, friends are friends are so you can get together and podcast and think you're funnier than ev- anyone else on earth. <laughs> that is that is pretty much it is. It's just yeah. someone you can podcast with. Yeah. See uh, I like being friends with benefits with people who uh, have the traditional definition of benefit, you know, like dental, health insurance. Sure, sure. That's sort of get that health care yeah, covered. For, yeah, 401k and all that okay, shit. Okay, so yeah. you're, you're friends. Like, yeah, I am also friends with my manager, and the benefits that I get there are mm-hmm. 401k, I get excellent mm-hmm. health care, I get dental, mm-hmm. um, transportation mm-hmm. is paid for. Uh, paychecks also mm-hmm. or you can make friends with the the doctor down the street and you know when you've got the <coughs> i tried that once it went south uh you can just walk up to their door knock on it be like hey bud i lent you my lawnmower that one time can you, can you fix this cough for me bud no he yeah, did try to finger do, my they, asshole they do bring all their doctor utensils home with them for mm-hmm. if, you know the surprise attack when someone's like hey i'm at my i'm at your door tory tory 90 percent of a doctor it's all up in the brain, baby. That's, that's why do you true. think? Why do you think they go to med school for 20 men, 21 million years? It's so that their brain becomes a medical computer. Ah, yeah. Well, I went to a doctor once and he did Google something in front of me and then show <laughs> me the Google page and said, this is what you have. And on the other logical extreme of that, uh, I read uh, an article the other day of two doctors that performed heart surgery on an airplane with a ballpoint pen. I thought you were going to say with each other. <laughs> they just performed <laughs> it on each other to see what happened. It was a collab. Simultaneously. There was, or it wasn't heart surgery, but it was uh, lung surgery. That's what it was. Because, like, this lady got hit by a car before she got on the airplane. On the plane? Wait, no, no, no. no, no. no, no she no, got no, hit no, by no. a car on the plane? <laughs> no, How did Tyler, the car get on the plane? You don't understand. This was Jackass 5. They were filming it. <laughs> Shit got really out of hand. It was Wee Man. They had to jab him with a, with a bick. <laughs> no, there's no okay. Even if she was hit by the car prior to getting on the plane, it's not like she would have just gotten on the plane yeah, just no, that's fine and dandy. No, no, that's what that's what she happened. She didn't just get she didn't just get hit by a taxi on the way to gate four and then just like oh fuck it, I guess I'll stand in line with TSA for two and a half hours and get on this plane. Yeah, that Bullshit. is what happened. She tried to play it off that it wasn't that bad, and then when she got on the plane and the plane elevated so that the the pressure in the cabin dropped or whatever, um, that's when she started having lung problems. Is because like her capillaries or some shit were overfilling because of the pressure of the cabin. So the doctors were like, "Shit, we gotta fucking deal with this before we land, is, or else no, she's just gonna no, die." Stop right there. Stop right there. This is why it's just easier to believe the Earth is flat because I don't want to have to fucking think about all of that shit that you just said. If I just believe the Earth is flat, it's like no, everything you just said is bullshit. La la la. I don't have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, because that's it's it's so far out of my realm. I'd rather just make jokes about her standing in TSA. Like, ma'am, we need you to take your jacket off. I can't. It's the only thing attaching my arm to me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I just prefer to believe <laughs> that the car did it so wrong that it hit a woman <laughs> in a plane. <laughs> So it was like GTA five where there's that <laughs> ramp outside of the airport. Someone just fucking launched it and hit the plane and it just hit her just right. They were someone. Someone was doing a rad stunt. Yes. Bing. This is your captain speaking. Uh, you may now remove your seatbelts and feel free to move about the cabin. 
and it just fucking took out part of the plane. Yeah. No. Um. Oh, guys, Meg's trying to fuck though. Meg's trying to fuck, so we need to get back on that. Uh, are we talking about fucking friends with benefits now? Are we trying? Are we suggesting? Okay. Well, here's the thing: is that I don't know how how sexy this podcast gets. Um, yeah, and also how 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 relevant to our personal lives it can get because well, it uh, depends on if it's funny, Tay. So not that personal. It's not. It's just literal. Uh, it's literal. I have nope. Said, this is this is a comedy podcast. Okay, what do you got that's uh, funny? Penises um, are funny. What if they I, have herpes? Dicks are funny. I, <laughs> I've, dicks I've, are pretty I've, funny. I've dealt with a couple in my life. Um, I do have literal friends with benefits where I have sex with them. Yeah, okay, but uh, we did we did just a, a hey, we gross. just said this is a comedy podcast and we're not doing this. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what disgusting. you want. Disgusting. Are you suggesting that Meg gets on the slip and slide of sin? Meg is not going to get on that slip and slide of sin. We're going to suggest true. quite the opposite. We're going to say commit yourself to a nunnery or find a different out drawing is fun. Do that instead. <laughs> Because if you do walk with the Christ child, you have all the benefits. Your life will be blessed. You will get into the kingdom of heaven. What else do you want? I can't think of any other benefits other than, you know, medical and dental and stuff like that. But that's, yeah, yeah. that's, on, the, that's on our earthly plane, which is flat. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the heavenly sphere is a mm -hmm. sphere. Yeah. And I... Meg, don't get on that slip and slide of sin. You you stay off of that. You you stay clean. Don't do drugs. Stay in school if you're in school. And gross. <laughs> Shit, we gotta have something better for Meg at this. If she's coming to us for this, we can't just be like, um, um, God's funny. And what about dental? <laughs> no, that's her own fucking fault for coming to us for this. She should know. We are the least qualified people. Uh, you two are. Oh, brag. I have sex. Meg, here's here's the advice that that we can give you legally mm -hmm. is that dance lightly on this one, T. <laughs> you are your own person who is in charge of your own destiny and body and body. Well, no, and no, nope. that's up to man, actually. Oh my yep. god. I don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. I'm not saying I think that's right. I'm just saying that's the game. You gotta play it. <laughs> e okay, yes, Tori does bring up a good point. Unfortunately, that is the game, and you are legally required to play it. Mm -hmm. Um also crabs are itchy. Keep that in mind. <laughs> so <laughs> crabs are itchy. That's what I will say about this conversation is that crabs are itchy. Hey, you know what else? Communication is cool. Hey, Meg, you know what else? Just have a fucking good time, you, you nasty yeah, girl. You, you nuts. nasty gal. Go nuts. Go crazy. Hey, that's okay, Meg. That's my final advice. Get it, girl. Shit. Get it. Tori 2020. Uh, mine, mine is communicate and be cool. Communicate and reciprocate? It rhymes, I guess. Yeah. There you have it. Tori, you got to get us out of this. I'm sweating I have a topic. because of how uncomfortable I am with everything. I have I have a different topic that's wildly different. I'll you know what? I'll trust you this one time, Tay, and don't okay. don't think that I'm giving you free reign of this podcast to 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 slip and slide whichever way you please. I'll give you this one. Okay. Okay. So you know how at zoos they'll say like, "Oh, there's only like a thousand of this animal left in the wild, and we should preserve them and uh, get their numbers back up so that they have a more healthy wild population." I'm gonna say I'm I'm pretty chill with there only being about a thousand tigers out there. So you hate tigers? No, so I'm just saying if there were if there were like a million tigers, th that that'd be scary. One. In this in this situation that you're setting up with the tigers, once again America wins because America did not have natural <laughs> tigers. I don't know if that's true, but I don't think it's true. <laughs> no, no, 
Well, Tay, it's not like if there was a million tigers, one would be walking around in rural Kansas. Well, no like, shit, it doesn't, dumbass. You're just like, you're going to the 7-Eleven. You're like, that a fucking tiger? Yeah, they're not just going to be everywhere. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like for the locations that those animals exist, like, like imagine wolves, right? Imagine there were like 10 million wolves. Then we'd have wolves like outside our 7-Elevens. Hey, tigers are problems for other people. Humans are selfish. I don't give a shit if fucking another country has tigers. (laughs) Oh my God. What's the most ferocious thing North America had? Fucking possums? No one gives a shit. They just hang from trees and shit. They're good target practice. No one hey, cares. Tori, hey, what? Tori, yeah. uh, I know you've heard of the, the, the gay term of bear, but you know it comes from an actual animal, right? What about gay bears? What? No, no, grizzly bears. Uh, oh. Nah, oh. I, I've never seen one. I think those are sort, sort of a Canada thing. <laughs> yeah. You said North America. Did I? Well, yes. in my mind, that's just America, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I'm not quite sure where the border ends. <laughs> North America is is America. It's in the fucking name. Yeah, I want the rest of the world to know this right now. You fucking listen to me, Canadians. <laughs> if we wanted Canada to be the U.S., we would have done it by now. <laughs> but fuck your shit country. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You have a bad, dumb country. <laughs> That's, that is in almost every way better than ours. Who the fuck names a place to live Saskatchewan? What the fuck is wrong idiots. with you? Idiots. Dumb idiots. They got taken by the French. You know, how, you know how weak the French are? You know what's even worse than Saskatchewan? They have a place just called the Northern Territories. Like, what the fuck does that even mean? Okay, that's a dope-ass that's name, That's like some though. Game of Thrones shit, kind of, though. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah, that's a hard-ass that. name. I can see that. He's the uh, warden look, of the Northern Kingdoms. <laughs> if, if there were, like... I'd be happy if if there were like, you know, a billion elephants in the world or like, you know, something big and dangerous, because I think it'd be good for us to have a little bit of competition. (laughs) I'm not saying like because then think about it this way. Hunting for sport, dumb as hell. Why do it? Hunting for survival. Ah, That's a different story right there. That is a literal different beast. Let's say there's like. I don't know. Instead of 30 to 50 feral hogs, there's like 300 to 500K <laughs> feral hogs. Okay, okay. What about this? What about this? In this new world that we will create when we genetically modify these creatures and set them back into the wild, grocery stores are, okay, never, grocery stores aren't gone, but they only sell things like Funyuns and granola bars and stuff. They don't have, you You can't buy the, meats the and cheeses. Shit, yeah. Yeah. You have to go out and you have to hunt that shit. And you have to like find a goat and milk it. You have to like, I don't know how to milk it. You just start squeezing until something comes out. Uh, instead of there being a deli, it they renovate it so that it's just like a gun store now in your yeah. grocery store. Yeah. So that as soon as you're done picking up, you know, your fucking berries and your grains, mm-hmm. you can go to the, the ammo department, pick up your 30 odd six bullets. Is mm-hmm. that an ammo? I don't know. And then just go hunting right out of the store. Wait, what the fuck just happened? We went from like, let's increase the number of animals and then you guys just took it off into, yeah, let's live in the 1800s. No, like, just no. went back in time. That You said hunting for survival and that is what, that's exactly what that is. If you want to have yeah. meats or like any type of like milks or like animal products, you got to go out and get that shit now. No more buying. Okay. You're surviving. Well, yeah, well, I'm I'm I fine guess. with that reality of like we all go back to like we're all just simple farmers on simple land and and have to do that. But I was thinking more of look, let's just get modern age animals just like a billion tigers, put them in the US and like just see what the fuck happens because some of them are going to get hit by an SUV and some <laughs> of them are going to eat very well. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a couple of preschools that are gonna have really dark days. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it, gonna be. We're gonna bad. start having we're gonna start having like uh, politicians getting up being like, now it is an outrage how many tiger attacks are happening in American <laughs> schools. The fact that it is so normalized, <laughs> we gotta stop people from bringing tigers into schools. Okay, we need stronger tiger regulations now. There are too many school scratchers out there. There's gonna <laughs> There's and then there's going to be like one party that's devoted to like 
No, it's it's our right to have tigers. We brought tigers <laughs> back from the brink, so it should be our right to have them wherever we want them. I don't want the government controlling my tigers, okay? Tigers don't kill people. People with tigers kill people. <laughs> now, if you're an honest, red-blooded American, it is your right to own a tiger. <laughs> okay, that'd be that'd be kind of sick. That'd be dope. That'd be way cooler than a gun. Oh, that's cool. Look, I can unload it and I can reload it. And yeah, fucking cool. Here's my tiger. It's metal and it makes a chink chink sound. No, 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 no. My tiger can, one, eviscerate any small dog that even looks at it funny and also purr. So it's also really cute. It goes zero to 40 in like a fucking second. So oh, like... Yeah. You're not getting away from this song, bitch. Hey, guys, this is going to be a really probably dumb question. Are tigers big enough to ride? Oh, yeah. Oh, sick. I mean, any cat is big enough to ride. <laughs> like, no. oh, that's a really cool BM. <laughs> OK, Tyler, I don't think. Well, oh, cool BMW. I'm going to get on my tiger and fucking run to work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can run with someone on them, but they can definitely withstand someone like like sat like if they were sashaying down the road they would be able to hold you up like i'm a little baby yeah have you seen like like tigers flexing their muscles when like killing something no i'm not a furry dude they're fucking shredded tigers uh, are pretty fucking shredded but i'm not just talking tigers here like yes tigers cool but if we unleashed like a la style and end of Jurassic Park Fallen Kingdom, the whatever the second one was called. Um, if we just unleash a bunch of different animals into the United States as is like, fuck, I mean, we're not even going to have to worry about dumb shit anymore. Like, oh, uh, my rent is too high. It's going to be like, no, your rent keeps you safe from the fucking animals that will maul you outside. Oh, I don't I don't like th I don't like this neighborhood. There's too many tigers. <laughs> Ugh, this is this used to be nice, but there's so many just horses around here. <laughs> Tyler, is that what happens at the end of the, the, the second Jurassic World? Do they release the dinosaurs it's into the U.S.? It's the worst movie I've ever seen. And yes, that is 100%, no exaggeration, exactly what they do. The executives were like, hmm, there's going to be another trilogy to clean up this mess. <laughs> and then they, they like fucking like rubbed two coins together and were like, God, I love the sound of money. Uh huh. And then it'd be Jurassic America 1. Uh, oh, Di fuck, Tori. That's probably what they're going to call it. Yeah. Uh huh. God damn oh, you're it, you're talking Tori. about the modern one? The new yes. ones, yeah. The, the remakes? Oh, I thought you were talking about the old ones. No. No. Oh, that's... Tori, they're going to call it Jurassic America. Ugh. Look. It makes money, man. I, and I'm pissed that it does. I'm mm -hmm. fucking pissed. Mm -hmm. But, like, God, that'd be fucking sick as hell if we just yeah, it would saved all of the animals... And then just let him go into North America and just fucking watched what happens. Mm -hmm. Just sort of see how when you even out the playing field a little bit, see if uh, if humans really are on the top of the food chain or if it's let's see uh, who really is the apex predator. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like this. Humans, let's see how they stack up. Like, let's see if they're worth their weight in gold. I mean, we know we know some people are going to become absolute sickos. Like Brock Lesnar is for sure going to start <laughs> ripping animals in half. <laughs> Brock Lesnar is going to wear the skin of every animal he's killed. And he's not going to get it, like, turned into a coat or something. He's going to rip the skin off of them and then put it on his big dopey body. <laughs> I was thinking of a quilt with animal pelts. Yeah, he's that's all he's going to do. He's going to just sew them together with his own fucking hair. Yeah. <laughs> what hair, Tori? What hair? You don't want to know what hair. Uh, uh. He's a wild boy. <laughs> he's going to get a TV show deal out of the whole situation. No one's going to want to film with him because he's just running into packs of animals and punching the shit out of them. Did we just describe the ultimate battle royale? I think so. When, of, when, yeah, the real battle royale. Earth. Yeah. 
Yeah. But this this begs the question, who wins that battle? The Tigers. They out if we release a million of them. No, no, like, no, no, no. Even playing field. Even playing field. Or are you saying a million of each species? Um, yeah. 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 If we okay. just unleash a fucking million of each species into America, the animal kingdom fucking wins and humans well, yeah, die. But the, the animal kingdom is a very wide spectrum here. Do we give it to the million tigers or do we give it to the million uh, mosquitoes with malaria? Oh, Look. shit. Hold on. It's probably crocodiles, though, isn't it? That's a good one, too. Oh, God. A million Look, crocodiles. It's literally just, it's just the food chain as it is now. Like, there's no debate over who wins because it's literally just the food chain as it is now with predators. I'm only interested in the human aspect of it because humans are being extinct and in not in a dumb way like global warming, in the fucking dopest way possible. The, the question here is, though, like, you said it's just the food chain as is, but there are some animals in the animal kingdom that would never even know that another one exists, right? Like, a, a, a northern gray wolf will never know what a fucking tiger looks like unless they're in a zoo across the way from each other. Wait, North Dakota ain't doing much. We could drop them all in North Dakota and just put up big walls. I was thinking Florida just to kind of like it's well, already no, kind of separated like it's already big, surrounded though. by water too big. No, we, we need we need a lot of space for this because a million of everything is still a fucking million of everything. A hundred of everything. It's a battle royale. Fortnite rules. OK, we're going Can... OK, I'm also thinking Florida because let's give it the weirdest human population like you know, you dr you drop a million tigers somewhere. If any state is even slightly prepared or confident, it's Florida. Are you sure that's not Texas? That's, that's true. No, because think of all the stories about like Florida man does this and it's like really weird shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Florida's going to find a way to like weaponize fireworks. Yeah, it's going to be like Florida man on bath salts ripped off Tiger's head <laughs> and became king of Tigers. Now fights for <laughs> Tiger's team. <laughs> I'm going to take the Florida man on the Tiger's team as the winner. Yeah. So I, I was thinking like, well, we got to give enough equal space to all animals um, and a, a square or a state like Nebraska or North Dakota seems more fair because it's a little bit more easily dividable. But a place like Florida, if you make it a square where half of it is water, then we get the ocean involved. So oh, we make hell. Do we have? Hold on. Do we have the technology to make Florida a square? <laughs> <laughs> this is science's boldest mission. <laughs> we just put a square wall up around Florida where there's equal parts land and equal parts water so that every every member of the animal kingdom and ocean kingdom can come hang out to play. Can we just make Florida a square? Can we just kind of scientifically do it? Can can we just, is that possible? Can we? I mean, terraforming look, is a thing. I think if we had enough saws, we could probably move some shit around. How do you think Pangea was formed? With the amount of global warming that it would take to make Florida a square. That's a lie, Tay. We would just be going two steps forward and five steps back because we'd melt the polar ice caps and making Florida a square with more water seems a little bit harder to do. Tay, uh, the, the climate's always been changing, okay? Oh, Tay, Howard, Tay, it's literally snowing outside where I am. <laughs> don't be, don't yeah, be so an Don't even idiot. tell me about that global warming, okay? Bullshit. Uh -huh. You know, there's only, the, realistically, I see only one ways one way that humans can win in this in this fight to the death against the animal kingdom nuclear fallout Schwing! yes oh yes it's been so long the hello return. and welcome to sword watch our dedicated deviant detail devoted to bringing you awareness to the dangers of life without swords <laughs> i got a hot one oh this I'm one's so excited. hot get sean evans it's a hot one Get Sean Evans. This one is hot out of the fucking oven. And boy, oh boy, does it taste so fucking good. Mm, yummy, yummy, so yummy, 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 yummy. Mm, slice me. You ready for this for this headline? Mm hmm. Man requests trial by combat with Japanese swords in battle against ex-wife 
but asks the judge for 12 weeks lead in time so he can forge or source the metal. (laughs) (laughs) Not not only does this dude want trial by combat, he's like, but give me a fucking minute. I want to make my own sword. (laughs) How the fuck else would you want to do a duel with your ex, right? You got to make your own weapons for this. You can't just go down to the mall and grab a katana off the shelf. Well, it's because she took all the other katanas in the divorce. <laughs> it's got to be personal. It's not that he didn't have a lot. It's that she did take them all. The greedy, oh, a bad <laughs> girl. Look, we can call her what she is. OK, and that's a deviant. <laughs> Also, I feel like 12 weeks is a really long time to make one sword. He's you don't know how long it takes metal. to fold the metal a thousand times in the Japanese style, Tay. I feel like you could do that in like six months. He is sourcing the metal. And also, it's 12 weeks, not 12 months. Oh, I, I thought it was months for some reason. Yeah, no, 12 weeks is a perfect amount of time. He is. He's not only like, oh, I want to, you know, just like make my own sword. He's like, I need to source my own metal to build myself a katana with the energy of a thousand samurai to smite my wife in this divorce. (laughs) Yeah, made with the souls of Shogun's past. This blade will smite the evil within. You know, it's it's probably bad PR for that judge to even be associated with this case. But he requested that case. Yeah, how fucking legendary. Like, you would go down in history books if you went, yeah, go nuts. <laughs> well, here's the story. A man locked in a court battle with his former wife has requested trial by combat with Japanese swords to solve the dispute. David, 40, from Paolo, Kansas, said he would give his ex-wife Bridget, 38, the choice of an attorney or a stand-in fighter to battle him. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know what? How gracious of him to allow yeah. a champion to step in in, in her place. <laughs> it's like, he's like, I'm, look, by by requesting this, I already have the upper hand, so I'll give you an opportunity. <laughs> this is just Tyrion in the veil right now. Like, He argued in court documents that dueling had never been explicitly banned or restricted <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> So really going technical with it. He's like, well, technically, hey, you didn't say I couldn't do it. Yeah, there's a there's a comma in this sentence, which could mean. Also, how fucking dope is it to now realize that? Oh, shit. Are you fucking kidding me? It wasn't explicitly banned. I can <laughs> do this. I'm absolutely like whenever you guys stop the podcast and I get an like arrested by international Mm -hmm. police Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fuck yes trial by combat let's go (laughs) yep yep this story is so hot out of the oven guess when it was published today oh baby it was published two hours ago oh my god are we gonna be able to tune in live to this trial by combat because this would be like the highest viewed thing like fuck the super bowl if fucking hbo or like whatever the boxing ticket, like whatever the fuck you pay, pay-per-view. If pay-per-view picked this up, holy fucking shit. Can you even imagine the money they'd make? I would spend anything to see a divorce trial turn into a combat trial. That shit Hell better be on yes. Twitch. That's all I'm saying. It's going to be fucking everywhere. He pointed out to the Iowa District Court in Shelby County that the method had been used as recently as 1818. (laughs) Wait, hold on. This has been done before in the U.S.? Tyler, are you telling me that the United States of America has held trials by combat? In 1818. Yeah. Uh, Time irrelevant, okay? We've done this. (laughs) and, And though it's unorthodox, you can do it. Wasn't there a president? I think it was Andrew Jackson who did like a trial by combat. Well, he just did a duel. A oh, duel that's, that's is was, different yeah. than a trial by <laughs> combat. Are we sure? Ostrom told the Des Moines Register that his inspiration came from a 2016 case in which New York Supreme Court Justice Philip Minardo admitted that duels had not been abolished. 
Holy Fucking shit. shit. This is such a game changer. Yeah, no, I this guy covered his bases. Do you know how many speeding tickets I could have gotten out of? <laughs> he didn't even want to get divorced. He just wanted to have a trial by combat. <laughs> he loves her very, very much. <laughs> and she's just like, I don't understand why you're doing this. Honestly, I have soon, one baby. thing to say to him, and that is king shit. That's some <laughs> king level shit right there. Yeah, he will become king of the United States. And I'm sorry, <laughs> but if we're still allowing sword play and trials, then yeah. Why not elections? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> why not anything else? Dispute at the grocery store? Sword. You're, yeah, someone someone pulls into your parking spot. Sword fight him. And then fuck the presidency. It's whoever can win in a sword fight. Again, be a, a tournament. Again, we are just describing America's Hokage. Look, it, it's a <laughs> it's a desire that I have. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've thought about it. But anything like, oh, Target won't give me a refund. Sword fight me, fuckers. Yeah. Except I could see this going very bad because corporations would just hire out like the best fighters <laughs> and they would yo, fuck yo, your shit. And then yo, that's, that's how true. we that's how we can get like hype for brands right it'd be like tune in this week for walmart versus target and like they've got like name like big name celebrity sword fighters oh my god all copyright disputes like oh walmart is suing target for like using whatever part of their brand oh yeah you want to go to court over this <laughs> fight me bitch it's no longer going to be like that oh who's taking this generation is it playstation or xbox we'll know <laughs> it'll take about 15 minutes we'll know Oh my God, if 15 minutes, someone is going to absolutely pump. Y'all ever seen The King on Netflix? Uh huh. No. Yeah, that fight, like that, like trial by combat kind of thing, was so goddamn realistic because they were just mm -hmm. fucking sweaty and tired and crawling uh -huh. and shit. Uh -huh. I want it to be like that, like human emotion, like struggle for survival. Let's go. I'm hoping Target comes out on top. That's my team right there. <laughs> I want that like one every fifth. The other ones I want to all be like the mountain versus the viper, and I want him to just smush his head. Gross. Tori, you're Tori, you're gonna love this because this article just it's the gift that keeps on giving. Oh, I would hope so. In the documents, Ostrom expressed a desire to meet his ex-wife and her attorney on the field of battle <laughs> where, she, <laughs> where he will rend their souls from their corporal bodies. <laughs> This fucker got shit poetic. Skyrim shit. This fucker got poetic. Where <laughs> oh. <laughs> he will rend their souls. He <laughs> added that his wife from Harlan had destroyed him legally. Wait, hold on. Say that again. He added that his wife had destroyed him legally. So what was the point <laughs> of adding that? Just because, just to say that he's going to destroy her un- Illegally? Physically. <laughs> Physically, he will destroy her. He asked Iowa District Court to give him 12, le 12 weeks lead time to allow him to source or forge katana and wakizashi swords. Wow. Wow. So he wants to have a backup, a kind of like a quicker short blade if he can, you know, give her with a quick jab. Absolutely. fucking mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just smart right there. His former wife's attorney, Matthew Hudson, filed a resistance to the request, pointing out that Mr. Ostrom had spelt corporeal incorrectly and added. <laughs> <laughs> like, what a weak description. If I was the judge, I'd be like, fuck you, nerd. Get in that field of combat. <laughs> fuck you, nerd. Fuck you, nerd. Now this made me want to have a better a way better I would pay combat any trial. amount of money to oh, hear fuck. a federal judge <laughs> like right after a lawyer does this whole spiel just to go, you fucking nerd. <laughs> now you're getting in that field of battle and no, I deny the movement to give you a champion. You have to go out, you fucking nerd. I thought you were about to say that he denied the request because it's 2020. But no, it's because he spelled corporeal wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the it was the wife's attorney basically saying like, no, no, we can't do that. He spelled corporeal incorrectly. 
and added. I love, I love the fact that like that was his defense, right? Like, shit, I can't disprove that duels aren't illegal it's, anymore. <laughs> it's the best fucking defense of like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Um, I um, gotta I'm find digging, something. <laughs> I'm digging at straws right now because I gotta find something because this fucker just found the biggest loophole. The attorney added, although Ostrom had and potential combatant do have souls to be rended they respectfully request that the court not order this done <laughs> so the attorney got funny with it as well he was yeah. it sounded like he had a good laugh though they do have souls that are very rendable <laughs> i would i would urge the the prosecutor to not the, the wife's attorney argued that a duel could end in one or both parties dying which would be disproportionate to a custody and property tax issues he asked the court to order ostrom undergo psychological treatment immediately <laughs> Uh, I think you just fucking meet him in the field at yeah, high noon. Look, absolutely. draw your blade, be ready. What are you so afraid of? Oh, he might be psychologically like insane. So that just gives him a that just gives him an advantage. Fight him. Gives him an, yeah, it gives him an edge on the field there. He's got fight he's him, got, you cowards. He's got light feet as well. He can dodge the moves. He can get you. Ostrom, in response, admitted to the spelling mistake, but denied any mental health issues. Iowa oh, well, court. Okay. Here's the best. Here's how the article ends, and it's just the best. Iowa District Court is yet to rule on either party's motion. <laughs> <laughs> so the judge didn't say no right away. Yo, yo, yo. If there's, if this was just posted two hours ago, right? So Correct. what we need to do is we need to load up the shapeless van, make protest signs that says trial by combat or give me trial by combat or give me death. I don't know. We're workshopping it, but you know, the protesters outside of court cases sometimes with their messages, mm -hmm. we got to do that. If we want to see this happen, sword, don't tread watch, on my trial sword, by combat. watch, sword, watch. Yeah. We just, <laughs> we say we're from an organization called sword watch. It's a dedicated deviant detail devoted to bringing awareness to the dangers of life without swords. And it's a podcast arguing, within a podcast. We're arguing that, his motion is completely legal and he is well within his rights to demand a trial by combat. And you all are cowards and disobeying the constitution. If you think otherwise, just because <laughs> you don't like it doesn't mean he can't do it. And that lawyer freedom is a speech, fucking nerd, freedom of fighting and freedom of swords. And then we call the judge a coward and say he hates America and make sure he doesn't get reelected because he didn't allow a trial by combat. Uh, we just tell the judge that if he denies this trial by combat, he's gay. Wow. That's that's foolproof. The judge is going to be like, no, I'm fucking what? No, I'm fucking. No, no I'm, I'm not. fucking not. What? Get on the, yeah, get out on the field. I'm not gay. What? Whatever. Fucking fine. Whatever. Have your trial by combat and let pay-per-view pick it up because Jesus fucking Christ. I don't just want it to be good. I want it to be cinematic. We thought MMA was going to be the best, like, raw fighting we had. But if we can get Trials by Combat to be a televised event, oh, baby. Can we get Miguel Sapochnik? Yeah, if he could direct all of them, if he could be the judge, the residing judge over all of these. I'd be fine. We should have a centralized location where all of these happen. Maybe a big circle We'll call it, I don't know, the Coliseum. Yeah, football's canceled. No more of that. We're going to ha now have those stadiums transformed into Coliseums. Oh, fuck. That's actually perfect because the stadiums are already there. We don't even need to spend more money. Nope. We just outfit them with weapons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take them away from the corporate sponsors, make them into state-mandated things because this is now a federal system. And that way, oh, fuck, we don't have to yes. deal with corporate America ruining our trials by combat. Welcome to Wrigley Field. <laughs> Welcome to Wrigley Field. This is the big game in which we have John <laughs> divorcing his wife. Sam. They're now going to fight with swords. Yes, he did craft his own. He had to source the metal from, uh, from deep, deep within the bowels of Japan, but it's been folded a thousand times in the ancient <laughs> style, and it will not break or fail him in the field. Ooh, and John splits his wife in twain. It looks like he's going to get the kids. <laughs> 
in <laughs> one yeah. mighty swing, she is in half. Well, have a happy life, John. You're free to go. <laughs> and you know the the little infographics that pop up that tell you like the players like where they're from from college where it's like I'm John from Iowa State and then it moves on to the next one. It's like that, but for the two parties, like my name's John. This bitch stole all my money one night when I wasn't paying attention, so I'm giving her a divorce and I'm looking for custody for the kids. My name's Sandra, and this guy is a cheating whore liar, and I want the kids, so we're duking it out in combat trial. And then it would come up with like the little lower third that would say John, home state, Kansas, <laughs> trained in northern Shaolin style. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I think we literally just made Maury, but with swords. <laughs> this is just Maury. <laughs> Hold on. Can we get Mori as the announcer instead of Mario Yamasaki? It's just, and officiating tonight's match, Mori. <laughs> we, we can have all of it. It'll be like Dr. Phil and Mori. They'll kind of be swapping in and out. <laughs> They're drawing on like a, on the screen with like the yellow marker. It was like, see, if he would have pivoted his leg at this position here, he would have gotten a clean swing on her shoulder, taking it right off. Yeah, that decision cost him this round. They do like the replays with the yellow lines drawn <laughs> That's on there. Like a football about. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And we still keep like what's great about football stadiums is they already have all the rigs for the cameras mm -hmm. where they can get like the floating like drone shots and like the things on the zip line. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Just fucking imagine. We got to split this up into like two minute rounds. Mm -hmm. Just so like, you know, they can have like their squires on the side, like giving oh, them shoulder yes. rubs and then like maybe fuck sharpening yes. the blades. And uh -huh. then it, it turns into a psychological game. And then we also get like full analysis of every round. Mm -hmm. Just like, oh, we see a great move here where he he faked with the left arm, but then brought the short sword over the right, giving her a bad nick on the arm. Oh, that's going to hurt her in the next round. So that actually brings up a good question. With these frequent breaks between rounds, are we making this a commercialized thing? Because in those breaks, hundred percent, that's that's ad money, baby. Yup. Oh, yep. fuck. Okay. Yes. Really important question: Who's playing the halftime show? Kid Rock. Perfect. Um, no, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's gotta be. Um, my name is Kid. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, no, Tyler, it's settled. It's Kid Rock. No yeah, more suggestions. Th that box is closed. <laughs> okay, but what if I hit you with this instead of nope, Tyler, Kid we're going Rock. with Kid Rock. Nope, Tyler, no, no, nope. Tori, you're gonna like this. It's Ramin Dijwadi. <laughs> nope, who? Kid Rock. Oh, yeah. come on. And and, and you don't and want Tori. like a sorry, yeah. sorry, you know who's opening for Kid Rock? Who? Limp Biscuit. Hell yeah, <laughs> Tyler. And by the way, Tyler. You racist asshole. It's Ramin Jowdy, okay? Oh, fuck. <laughs> so you you culturally insensitive fuck? I want a full orchestra that's just doing dramatic ass fucking tunes. Wait, like what if it's like a Viking choir? Oh, yeah, so we get that Skyrim <laughs> shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> with the halftime show. <laughs> with the halftime show with Hans Zimmer. <laughs> <laughs> you just hear like the drums kick in. <laughs> now, guys, I got to hit you with another thing before we end this episode. Mm -hmm. Please do. Because I told you to prepare your funny bones. Yeah. Glug, 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 glug. Welcome to Liquor Store Reviews. Oh, God. Again, I was so, so excited. I was so upset that we hadn't been doing any of our recurring bits for a while. And today, today's a good day, T. Again, we're still we're still really working on that on that title. So or like that intro. So if anyone's got any ideas for liquor store reviews, I'm open to suggestions. Guys, I went to a liquor store a couple years back and I had an experience there that I was wondering if anyone else shared. So I really wanted to uh, look up the reviews for this place. And they did not disappoint. Because when I was there. It was just the weirdest environment because, and I don't say this about liquor stores often, a child rung me up. Oh, how you, uh, okay, and, when you say child, explain age. Uh, 
about six years old. Oh, <laughs> oh. Run, runs runs in the family. Okay, took my money, scanned the alcohol, uh, gave me my change. It, it was it was a child, a literal child. That's was he like? Give me your ID. <laughs> That's just like straight up illegal. And we'll get to that in a moment because what's great about this liquor store is that the owner responds to a lot of the reviews. Oh, that's the best. Oh, that's the best. It's the best. But first I want to hit you with the one-offs here. We'll get into the, we'll get into the child labor in just a moment. (laughs) We don't need to worry about the child. We'll circle back to that. Yeah. First review, four stars. Great bunch of guys, cold beer. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. That's a podcast name right there. Oh shit! Great right. bunch of guys, cold beer, and I'm not talking about a title epi- like a title for the episode. I mean, we need to start a new podcast that is called that. <laughs> it's, and he's not saying like, oh, like that's a specific brand. He's saying there's a lot of good beer for men here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great beer for guys. It's it's good beer for guys. Mm-hmm. Women find another liquor store. This one is for the <laughs> men. Yeah, sorry, none of your fancy dancy flavors. Here we got Michelob Golden Light, and and that's it. Actually, that's the only one we have. <laughs> no, it's, no it's wine. Good. It's a great bunch of guys. Cold beer. Uh, the, yeah, I would like some gin, please. Get the sorry, fuck bud. out. <laughs> we only got guys. Cold beer. And you're a woman. Get out of our fucking store. The other one is a three star review. And it's. um. Wait, hold on. What was the f- first one? Star count for four stars. Oh, OK. This one is a three star review. I can't tell if it's good or bad. The booze did the trick. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good or bad review? Like the three stars makes me vi- like if it was five stars and booze did the trick, I'd be like, had a great time. Love it. Three stars. I'm like. Is this good or it's it's one of two intonations of the phrase like, oh, God, the boost did the trick or like, oh, fuck. Yeah, the boost did the trick. And they say that three star reviews are the most honest online. So, (laughs) I mean, Uh, they did. They did a trick. No one knows what the trick was. Breaking up the family could have (laughs) been could have been got him a promotion. Also could have been had a great night, had a bad night. No one's sure. Then now let's get into the the owner responses. Oh, great. So this review is thoroughly detailed. Mm -hmm. This used to be my go to store until they inappropriately called my 85 year old mother and me fucking morons for parking (laughs) next to the building (laughs) next to (laughs) next to another truck that was already there. Instead of kindly saying something, they yelled at me while I was at the cash register. (laughs) We were obviously leaving soon, and I'll never be back. In response to your response, we were not parked in the driveway. We were 15 feet south of the entrance. No one was in harm's way, and there was nothing polite about the way the staff spoke to us. Nice try. Response from the owner. Lisa. We offer our sincerest... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> of course they're named lisa like come on i just love i just love how personal he decided to make it like it's a fucking letter dearest lisa we offer our sincerest apologies that you feel slighted by your treatment at our store even though your visit may have been quick your decision to park where you did in the <laughs> middle of the fire exit not only put yourself in danger but many of our other patrons <laughs> <laughs> So, Lisa, you're a goddamn liar, just, and I love their way of putting it. Just shooting back with some cold, hard logic. Sorry you don't like it, Lib. As for the truck that was parked in our driveway, it was the company truck unloading product. You were politely asked to move, but you hysterically laughed at our cashier. Therefore, please be more considerate. Thank you for your review. I fucking love that. <laughs> They are just like no bullshit in this yes. Google review section. Because yeah, people just think that if they like it, try and bitch about anything, it's like, oh, well, I'm automatically right because you're a store and I'm not. And it's like, an individual. No, yeah, you were being a dumb idiot. You were being a big <laughs> idiot, Lisa. Everyone knows it. Everyone calls you Lisa the big idiot behind your back. 
You're a big, dumb idiot, Lisa. And so is your grandmother. <laughs> and then let's circle back to the child labor. Please do. Two stars. Six year old kid rang my booze up. Not joking. <laughs> He scanned my booze, took my money. I was in shock. Very illegal. The dad was... <laughs> the dad was ringing on the register next to him. So not the dad was watching his son, like, you know, make the interaction and just be like, oh, it's bring your kid to work day. The dad was working on the other register. And this kid is just like, like, no, he, no, the little tyke's got that one. I'll do this one. <laughs> the kid's got a cigarette. And he's like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> Gin only for today. <clears throat> you want to check out our uh, IPAs in the back? <clears throat> we got a sale. That'll be twenty nine ninety five. You're drinking some Smirnoff ice? <clears throat> Fucking pussy. Yeah. And then the response see, from the... See this? <laughs> Holds up a bottle. This is, <laughs> this is 40 straight ounces of Jack Daniels. Just fucking chugs it. He's, he, he's drinking a beer while he's working, too. Yeah, it's a stressful job. Yeah, yeah. For a six-year-old? <laughs> Response from the owner. Hello, Mr. Carlson. We understand that it is a bit out of the ordinary to have a seven-year-old ring your items up. And I love the subtle, like, correction, he's seven. Yeah. <laughs> he's not six, he's seven. He's However, actually my beautiful husband. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> That's I not my son. That joke. It's my beautiful say, husband. How else, how else would you expect a seven-year-old husband to bring home money for the bills? God, I love him so much. He brings in all of our money, and he's just such a good little worker. He works so hard. I love him so much. However, we are a family-run business, and our kids come to work with us from time to time. As you stated, our son is never without our supervision. We apologize if you felt this was an unpleasant experience. <laughs> no, unpleasant it's, it's, isn't it's how I just, phrase it. Yeah, no, it's just literally illegal. Like, it's not even, like, a child labor illegality thing. Because, like... Families have their kids work in restaurants all the time. It's the serving of alcohol that's the illegal part. You have to be at least 18 years of age before you could serve alcohol. Wait, hold well, on. He's a, a husband. He's not working. They're not paying him. He's just doing. Because uh, huh? oh, I, I had a situation like this because back in the day, your boy Tori was a cold, hard narc, and I would go around uh, <laughs> like with with a police officer and be like underage, and I would go in and you try fucking and, rat. I know I try to buy like like they know it's gonna happen, but you try to buy tobacco, and then they say, get, "Show me your ID." They look at it and go, "You're not 18," and I go, "No, I'm not," and they give it back and go, "Okay, on your way." And one time I went into a tobacco store, <clears throat> asked for the cigarettes. And it was a very young child, six, seven, eight, somewhere around there, who was working it. And then his dad came up and was like, whoa, 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 can I get your ID? And then he did send me on my way. But it was still strange that if the dad hadn't come out of the back room at that moment, that six-year-old, seven-year-old, whatever, would have definitely sold me a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, because the six-year-old was that's... cool and you were a fucking <laughs> snitch. Yeah, I was a dirty narc. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking pig. <laughs> yeah, what? Fucking lick the sweat off of the piggies, Tori. Fucking <laughs> snitch. <clears throat> Next review. Two stars. Was quite unhappy with them. They do not have what I wanted. Customer comes first, because it sounds like a silly strike is going on, and they're not going to stock your stuff. Well said. This is, this is where the owner gets too legit. I I'm uh, disagreeing well struck, with you, Tori. I don't think that that is well absolutely a uh, coherent sentence. The owner gets too <laughs> legit to quit right here. Oh, great. Hello, Wayne. We don't <laughs> expect everyone. I love how he starts with everyone's first name. <laughs> yeah, like really get on that personal level. Yep. <laughs> we don't expect everyone to understand and support the purpose of the strike that we are supporting. Until these breweries settle it with their workers and pay them a fair wage, we will not stock any of their products. Hey, hey, that's actually kind of cool. Yo, that's wild. And what? What a yeah. bro. Okay, was this in Minnesota? Yeah, yeah, for real. Damn. This owner is like, they keep it real as shit. They respond and they're like, quit your bullshit, okay? I'm going to lay out the should, fucking facts. Should we... Should we shout them out on the podcast? No. Okay. <laughs> These places remain anonymous. Yeah. And 
we're not promoting drinking under age as we are not promoting the dirty slip and slide of sinful sex, premarital sex. So please, please keep that in mind. You know what I do promote is the end of a podcast. We do promote ourselves at the end of the podcast. So if you liked the show, go oh, ahead and leave I'm us a like. I'm not done. Oh. Tyler, uh, the fuck. Well, you- timer says timer says we are. Hold on. There's there's let me let me end it with with one review. Should we should we do our spiel first and then you do it? Keep people tantalized. Oh, kind of keep them keep them on edge, mm-hmm. waiting. Yeah, for the end. yeah, yeah. I got I got a little final review that's just perfect for this. Okay, take okay. it as a stream so, uh, on here. Yeah, if you like the show, go ahead and leave us a comment uh, or rating and review. It really helps the show out, gets us into curated lists, and helps spread us around. Speaking of spreading us around, go ahead and follow us on Twitter and share us with your friends uh, so that you know they can see all our good, good content. And if they're too intimidated by an hour-long podcast, Tori throws together these little clip shows of out-of-context funny bits from the show and throws them up on Twitter for easily digestible content that'll get you get you hooked into the rest of our shit. So uh, go ahead and do that. And it's been been a good episode. Thanks for hanging out with us. Leave a comment. You know, recommend some questions. Recommend some topics. The final review. <clears throat> Not good tasting beer. <laughs> As if they fucking control that. How many stars? How many stars? One.